we have a new derivative, so fundamental theorem of calculus, the fundamental theorem of the divergence. Or, to those of you who are in the know, it's called the divergence theorem. If you want to sound fancy, you can say the fundamental theorem of the divergence. So we remember the deal. Um, the, uh, uh, the sum uh, of a derivative in a region, or the integral of a derivative in a region. So let's see. We're going to take the integral of our derivative, del dotted with v, that's our divergence. And it's sort of a, it's a scalar. So it's something you have to fill a volume. We have to think about a volume for this one. So the region, in this case, is a volume integral. So this scalar, del dot v, times just dv, okay. doing a volume integral, is related to um, the values of that field at the boundary. So if we're doing sort of a volume integral, we're thinking about the divergence inside, the boundary is a surface integral. So we want to go the integral around the closed surface. So if this is some volume, any volume has a surface all the way around it. So it's a closed surface, surface integral of just the field. And since it's the first surface integral, it has to be dA. Okay? The integral of a derivative in a region is related to the values at the boundary. Same as the other two, just written for different dimensions and different kinds of derivatives. Um, and it sort of matches what we were talking about. If a field had divergence, right, if it looked like field was being created uh, in the region, then we said it had to have a net amount of flux coming out of a cube. Well, of course, that's the vector flux. That's what we've been talking about with the electric field. This looks a lot like um, E dot dA. So you can see where all this is headed. The divergence theorem looks a lot like it's useful for, um, for Gauss's law. Right? This looks just like Gauss's law if you put an E field there. So let's do that. Let's apply the divergence theorem to Gauss's law. OK, well, all we got to do is switch um, v to e. Right? So we could say, we already know this is Gauss's law. If we go around a surface and we have e dot dA, well, we know that is what? We know that's q enclosed over epsilon naught. Okay. What we need to do now is think about uh, Q enclosed. So rather than think about a point charge, if we're doing fields, we can think about a uniformly or a, just a, a charge density in space, rho. Right? So rho is our volume or three-dimensional charge density. So if you just think of rho as a function, then this becomes the integral of adding up all the rho, dv, and we're over epsilon naught. So any volume, if you do integral of rho dv, if it's a point charge or whatever it is, you can figure out all the, all the charge enclosed. Let's see. And this would be, yes, this is the volume integral of this same, this same region. But then at the same time, we can apply the divergence theorem to the E field and say this is equal to integral of E dot dA on the surface is equal to the volume integral of del dot E dV equals the integral of the volume of del dot e dv. Okay. And then this is where you get the differential form of one of Maxwell's equations. You see that the thing inside the integral is the same. Right? This is a volume integral of rho over epsilon naught dv. This is a volume integral of del dot e dv. So these two parts in this volume are the same. And this is what gives us then the first differential form we've got del. Oops. Uh, del dot e equals rho over epsilon naught. So here, using fundamental theorem of calculus, I've showed you that this is the same Gauss's law as what you're used to. And now we'll look and see when to use which one. 